Bruchim Abayim, welcome everyone. We are continuing on Shukharuch Archaim, the Halachot of Shabbat, Siman Rishnum Gimal, and the regular Prince of Mishnabura. We are in Daf Chaf Aleph, Amud Aleph, in the middle of Sif Aleph of Siman Rishnum Gimal. We spoke about the Dinim, the Halachot of a regular Kiraim, a regular stove of the time of Chazal. We spoke also about Tanur, which is a much um, more sophisticated, a higher level of heat. Um, which has its astringencies. Now we're going to talk about the third and the final type of oven that they had in the Chazal, which was a kupach. Kupach was very much um, the structure of kiraim, which is a, a cube, not a cone shape tanur, but really an oven that is um, straight, comes up the walls from, from all sides. It's a um, um, square cube basically with one opening um, place for one pot to be put on it and the front was open for fuel for putting the coals in the wood inside so that's a kupach now kupach is harder than a regular kiraim but it is cooler than tanur so it says the shukharuch kupach shu makom shfitat kidra achad it depends what the fuel source is. If you use kash uh, ugvava, things that don't have continuity, they're not real coals. They're like straw leaves, the things that are very thin, they burn right away. They create a, a hot and quick fire, and then they just fizzle out. There's nothing to really stoke there. So we mentioned that even with all of that, in Tanur, we are more machmir by, by um, straw. But here, they would be like uh, a regular kiraim that you don't have to be concerned. You don't have to take it out. You don't have to cover the source of heat. You could just use them with open fire from before Shabbat going into Shabbat. But if you make the fire with actual coals, you have wooden coals. You have coals made out of um, leftover of olives. Uh, they're pressed to solid pieces. All of that is going to be like tanur, that even if you take it out, still would be a problem. Now this says the shukharuch. What happens if in one of the scenarios in which you don't have to, um, you don't, you shouldn't put put the pot, leaving it on, um, on the kiraim, going into Shabbat, and you forgot and you did. Right, so every scenario b based on what it should be. For instance, if you have a regular kiraim and you have regular source of fuel, you have coals inside, and you left food on it, which is half cooked, going into Shabbat without covering the coals. That would be asur based on what we learned before, right? If you have food that is half cooked, it's machal ben derusai, but it has not been prepared fully, and you're putting it on open fire on Friday right before Shabbat, right? Even though that you're putting it before Shabbat, still it's going to be asur because Shema Khalim, we're concerned you're going to tamper with the level of fire, and therefore, because you're concerned, you, your guests are coming Friday night, the food is almost ready, but not fully ready, so we're concerned you're going to to higher the level of heat by stoking it. Now this would be by however you do it, but depending on the, the flame source that you have, the heat source that you have, therefore it's asur. Now what happens if you forgot and you did it? Right? You put your half-cooked chalent, the choresh, rice, whatever it may be, on open stovetop before Shabbat going into Shabbat. If it's something that has been fully cooked, if, if it was fully cooked, even though the further cook makes it better, still would be mutar to use it. But if it's something that's half cooked but not fully cooked, and you left it by mistake, Asur ad Motzei Shabbat. That food you're not allowed to eat until Motzei Shabbat. Veim Avar Veshaha. Now that's if you forgot, you didn't know the halacha. Your son comes from the yeshiva, 
says, Ma, Ta, what did he do? He said, oh, we put this before Shabbat. It was half cooked. It's, don't worry, we didn't do anything on Shabbat. Right? So the son, of course, respectfully explains to them, opens the Shukharuk, says, look, that is a problem. So that's after Shabbat. But if a person knew the halacha and he did it anyways, that's avar v'shaha, not shachach v'shaha, then asur bishnehem. Then not only a half-cooked food is going to be asur until Moshe Shabbat, but even if it was fully cooked is asur, given that further cook, cooking makes it better, enhances the cholent. Further cook enhances the cholent, the taste of the cholent, right? Makes it better. Many foods are like that. We mentioned before, water is not like that. Water is considered mistamek veralo. So if you put a kumkum, if you put a kettle that's fully boiled, is heated to boil, and now you put it on open stove top on um, Erev Shabbat going into Shabbat, can you have your chai, can you have your tea, or your coffee from, from that hot water? Yeah, no problem. You can have, use it because it was fully cooked, given that you forgot. But if you knew and you did it anyways, for instance, you came to this shiur, but then you conveniently uh, did not do chazara and you were confused and you didn't do it, right? So then you can't use it until Motei Shabbat. So it says, I mean, again, the, the cases that are forgetting or not knowing is very common. You go to someone as a guest, right, and they have something that they had from before Shabbat half cooked, so that's um, very questionable. And says the, the Ramah, Ramah adds over here, that not only you have to, in the case of Mezid, the case that you knew and you did it anyways, not only you have to wait until Motzei Shabbat, but you have to also wait because you don't want to have any hana'a from what you did. So Ramah says, if it takes, let's say, one hour to cook the food, you can't eat it until an hour after Satakochavim, after Motzei Shabbat. Ad Shriyasu, right? So that's what the Ramah says. <coughs> Even though that if you cook on Shabbat by Mezid, we're going to see in, in Siman Shin Yud Chet, Sif Aleph and Sif Bet, that that food you cannot use forever, right? That food you cannot use forever. But here, you didn't cook on Shabbat. You left something on stovetop from before Shabbat. You did still an Avera. You went against the Shukharuch, but you didn't do any Surdoraita. So therefore, you don't have the um, eternal prohibition. The Kafachayim says you only have a Surdara Baran here, so therefore, you could use it after Shabbat. No problem with that. Um, you could use it. Now, says the, the Ramon. How about if a non-Jew returned it on Shabbat? Then it's Dino Keshachach. Says the Ramah, that halacha is equivalent of you forgetting. If the Goy went and put your food to warm it up on, um, on Shabbat, I could go finish the cooking. It's like avar v'shaha, uh, sorry, it's, it's like shachach v'shaha, it's like forgetting and putting it on. Ve'imechsir Yisrael dino ka'avar v'shaha. If the Jew returns it on fire, that's like avar v'shaha. That's like you um, transgressing knowingly and leaving it on the stovetop. Ve'imistamek v'ralo mutar. So in that case, if you have a food that has been fully cooked, and further cooking is not good for it, and you returned it on fire on Shabbat, then it will be mutar. Anything short of that, if you did it yourself, will be asur. If the goy did it, it's like shachach v'shaha. So then, if it was fully cooked, even if the further cook is good for it, you're good to go. But if it wasn't fully cooked, then it's a problem, even if a goy did it. So that, let's, let's cover until here, because the next Yeshomrim is going to be a, um, a little curve here. Says the Mishnah Burah. Um, 
in עוד כ"ט. ואם שכח ושהה, חושקן אם שגג בדין. If you forgot or if you made a mistake, the same halacha. Either you um, didn't know the halacha, right? Or you forgot um, that this is asu, right? So you either forgot the halacha or shagag within, you thought that this is mutar, right? Afiru mistamek veyafelo. Even though, if it's fully, we said, if you forgot the halacha or didn't know the halacha, if you put something that is fully cooked, even if the further cook is good for it, it still will be mutar, right? Even if you put it inside the oven, says the, shukha, the mishtabura. Not only on top of the, the, the stove top, on top of the tanur, but even if you put it inside the tanur, still is mutar. What the reason? Because you're not really benefiting from it. Let's be serious. This was fully cooked. Now the fact that it became a little better that's not very consequential. It's not like really does it, people eat cholent when it's fully cooked. Now, if it's a little bit better in Shabbat morning than Friday night, fine. But if it's fully cooked, you're not really having hana, a substantial hana uh, from the further cooking that it's happening. Therefore, it will be mutar. Because it was fully cooked beforehand. Valkin, but it mutar. But if it was not like that, if it was not fully cooked, if it's half cooked, then it's going to be asur. And not only asur for the person who did it, but it's going to be asur for everybody. So if you're guest in that house, it's going to be asur for you as well. Certainly for his household, it's going to be asur because he originally cooked it for them. Therefore, of course, that's pashut. That's going to be a problem, right? Now, we have to at some point get into the discussion of our ovens versus stovetops because ovens are far more complicated nowadays. Um, when we discuss some of the alachot of, of Chazara, we'll talk about that as well, especially nowadays the convection ovens that you open them, they stop working, there's a fan. Uh, in much of the sophisticated ovens, they have a fan that, that uh, ensures even cooking and, and even distribution of heat uh, in, in all areas of the oven. So that fan usually stops when you open the, the, the oven and close it, it turns on. Uh, the light of the oven goes on, on and off. Then the oven itself is more when you're putting something in it, because you can't really cover the oven. You can cover with the blech, the stovetop. How are you going to cover the oven. So there's an issue of looking like you're cooking on Shabbat. There are multiple problems with putting things in oven, which you have to discuss at some point. Um, even if you do have a, a Shabbat mode oven, or those that take care of all the light and digital readout and the fan, and all, still there, there, there are elements to be discussed halakhically. But nevertheless, says the Mishnah Rura, Ad Motzei Shabbat, that until Motzei Shabbat it's going to be Asur, which is Bichtesh um, Yaseh. The Hagaot Ashri over here says the Mishnah Bura says that it, it means until uh, the time that it takes would have taken you to do it on Motzei Shabbat. So if you took one hour to cook, one hour after Motzei Shabbat is when you you are allowed to have it. So it's not only says the Mishnah Bura in a case that you transgress knowingly that you can't leave this on, on oven, on, on stovetop, and you left it, that you have to wait uh, But even if you didn't know the halacha, by mistake you put it, not knowing that you can't leave this half-cooked uh, food on stovetop, the halacha still would be that you wait until Motzei Shabbat, and on top of it, the time that it would take for this food to be cooked. So. If it's hour, hour after Motzei Shabbat is when you could have it both by the case of Shogeg and Shagag, Shachach Veshaha, or Avar Vesha. Now, what's the business of the Goy? Because the, the Ramah all of a sudden throws a wrench. It says, if the Goy put it on, right, on Shabbat, then it depends if the Goy puts it, uh, it becomes like Shogeg. If you put it 
on Shabbat. It's like mezid. So what does that mean exactly? Hechzira menu Yehudi lesorech Yisrael. The Mishnah Bura says that we're talking about the case that the goy puts it on for a Jew, not for himself. Because if the goy does something for himself, then it's mutar um, to, to benefit from it, given that there's no other issues. For instance, if there's no issue of bishulakum, which there, there isn't over here, there's no issue of of, um, of of kashrut, and so on, then you could actually benefit from something that he did for himself. Right? Now, if you to told him to do it, then um, it's considered like you did it yourself. So when the Mishnah of the Ramah writes that if you if the Goy does it, it's like shagag v'shaha, shachach v'shaha, that's only if he did it on his own. But if you told him to do something, then it's like Jew doing it himself. It's like avar v'shaha will be uh, much more, much more severe, right? Why is it that if the goy does it on his own, it's considered like shachach v'shaha, like you forgot? The mashna asa al yedei no yehudi b'mezid lo chamir mi mashna asa al yedei Israel b'shogeg, because him he's always a notch down. So therefore, what he does b'mezid, thinking that I'm doing this for the Jew, is going to be like the Jew thinking um, that this is mutar and doing it b'shogeg. But if the Jew himself returns something on on fire on Shabbat, even if he didn't know that he thought this is fully mutar because the food is cooked, it's like he knew the halacha and he left it um, because this you're, you're returning it on Shabbat. If the food is further cooked, is good for it, even though that the food is fully cooked still would be asked if you return something on Shabbat onto a fire even though that's fully cooked and it's always not cooking more but if the further cook for further heat makes the quality of it a little better that would be asur and the reason why is it that we are more stringent when you return something on Shabbat than if you left it on the stovetop from before Shabbat? Because you're doing something on Shabbat. Very simple. If I left something from before Shabbat, I, I, I left things in motion, and it happens by itself, I didn't do anything. The whole thing is because of Gezerah. But here, you actually did something on Shabbat. Magen Abraham, interestingly, says, if the food was fully cooked, even though that the further cook makes it better, so it's cholent that's fully cooked, and you take it out, uh, you know, you take it from the countertop, you put it on the, um, on the stove on Shabbat, then for other people it's mutar. Only for you is asur, says the Magen Abraham. Me'achashayim e'bushal kodem korsolkov ve'eshogeg. Because... A, it was fully cooked from before Shabbat. B, I didn't do it knowingly. I didn't know. I, I thought it's mutar. So therefore, uh, Magan Ram says it's mutar for other people. For you, we make a kenas. You didn't know, too bad. You have to know, right? But for other people, it would be mutar. Veda says the Chafetz Chaim, you must know that in Zehu Afil Roshitat Arama, the Posek Besofa Seif Keshomrim, the Ramah is going to be lenient that when you have machal ben derosai, that when you have a half cooked food, you could leave it on stove on Erev Shabbat. Ramah is going to be mekel momentarily, but nevertheless, hacha be chazara shavim him ledina. Both the Rema and the Shulchan Aruch agree that when you put something on Shabbat back on stovetop, it's going to be a problem if it is um, if it is Mr. Mekveyafelo, right? Sorry. Well, we'll get to the halachot of Bishul afterwards. We are talking for now, even 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 if it's fully cooked belach, right? Lach is more chamur because later on, as we will see in Siman Shin Yud Chet, if Dalit, Maran Paskins like Talmidera Rabbeinu Yona, over there against the other Rishonim, 
that by lach there is bishul achar bishul. So it could technically be much more severe, but even by yavesh, if it's Mr. Mekve, yafelo, it will be fine. Why, if you have something that's completely hot, belach, and it's Mr. Mekve ralo, then it will be mutar, right? And on that, says the Mishtabura, if it's Mr. Mekveralo, if it's a further cook is bad for it, even though that lechatkila you cannot return something on stovetop, that's the, not covered. You need all kinds of conditions for that to be mutar. A regular chazara uh, is not mutar even if the thing is fully cooked and further cooked is not good for it. You need to have a covered stovetop in order to do chazara. And you perhaps need to, 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 to have it held in your hand, have thought in the beginning. We'll see Maran is more mekel. Maran is more machmir by shihia than the Ramah, and the Ramah is more machmir than Maran in chazara. So it's a little funny. Um, you have to keep your mind on it. But that has requirements, chazara. So to, to just take a fully cooked item and put it back on the stovetop that's not covered is asura according to everybody. According to Maran, According to Rima, because everyone is Asur. But if you did it with the Eved, well, it depends. If the food is fully cooked and further cooked is not good for it, put that. Right? Even if you knew the Allah Khan, be Mezid, you return it, you didn't care, still it's going to be Mutar. Right? For Yesh Umrim, and says the Shukharuch now, the second Shita over here. Right? Now this is going to be according to the Shita of Rashi and Ri in the Gemara, not, not to make it too confusing. But yes, Omrim Shekol Shinit Bashel Kmachal Ben Derosai. There are those who hold that so long as the food has been cooked, that is edible now. Maybe hardly, but it's edible nevertheless. If it's considered Machal Ben Derosai, there are those who hold that it's going to be now mutar to leave it on um, on the stovetop from before Shabbat going into Shabbat. Or, of course, if it's fully cooked, but the further cook is good for it. Both of those scenarios, the Yeshomrim holds that's going to be mutar to leave it on open fire, on stovetop directly without a blech from Friday going into Shabbat. Right? Now this the Ramah paskins like this. Again, Maran does not paskin like this because Maran is yesh stam yesh, al is like stam. But the Ramah uh, is going to paskin like this Mandamar uh, shortly, as we will see. But Afidu Husak Begefit Vaisim says Maran, even if the fire source is real coals of Gefit Vaisim, still open fire, we're not concerned you're going to stoke it because it's, full, it's, it's edible. Once it's edible, people don't care much. They let it just take its course. We're not concerned that it's going to stoke the fire. We're not going to be, you know, the food, food is fully cooked. The further cook makes it better. It's not a big deal. Not a big deal. We're not concerned you're going to come to stoke the fire. We're going to be all nervous and anxious. People are not anxious about that. The food is edible, so fine. The, the guests this time will not have the best time. Not a big deal. That's what the, the Yeshom Rim holds. That's what Rashi and Ri hold. The Keva Denis Bashir says the Mishnah Rashi Raul Lechol Edadachak, even if it's hardly edible, to Leka Lemecha Shabbayechate. We're not concerned he's going to go out of his way and forget about Shabbat. He's so nervous. He's going to forget about Shabbat to come to stoke the fire. The Keva and Shabbat will say, Lama Yechate Bechinam. This is edible. He's not going to come to stoke the fire. Or the Kachshari Afilu Beena Gerufa Uktuma. Therefore, even if it's open fire, we're not concerned about it. Ve'en Sarech Lazayla Veshadayin Lo Yigya Lemachar Ben Derosa. The only case, according to Yeshua Mim, that's Asur is, it's not fully raw, but also not machal ben derosa. It's somewhere between, right? It's like somewhat cooked, but it's not edible yet. That's asur. Or when you come to return it on fire, right? Machal ben derosa is asur to return on fire. We said according to everybody, it's asur, right? 
Either of those two cases is what's asur. Because it looks like you're cooking when you put it back on Shabbat on fire, on uncovered fire. And what's Machal ben Derosai? Says the Shabbat, we already spoke about this a number of times. Ben Derosai was a Mr. Thief, he was a head of bandits. And it's Machlok and Rashi and Rambam. Some say it's half a cook, some say, some say it's one third cook, but, but we know the definition. The definition is hardly edible, but edible nevertheless. We will see the Shukharuch in the next Siman, in Reshnun Dalit, is going to Paskin, that is Chatsi Bishul, it's going to be halfway cooked, not one third, so one third will be still considered uncooked, right? Now the problem is Marani Yoredea Paskin Shilish Bishulo. So it's a little it's uh, easy to read this the Mishnabura over here that the Maran later on here in Orachaim is going to say Khatsi Bishulo, but if you take a look at Siman Kuf Yud Gimal by the Alachot of Bishul Akum, over there Maran says is Shilish Bishul, but Magravram answers the, the question. Magravram over here in our Siman Rashnun Gimal, he says that for Shabbat Maran is Mahmir. That has to be more cooked than than for Bishulakum, which is the Rabbanan, which Maran is, is willing to be more mekel and say Shlish Bishul already is considered cooked. So if the further cook is done by Goy, is fine, right? So that depends on if it's the Oraita. Over here we're talking about the Oraita. Over there we're talking about the Rabbanan. So therefore, says the Chafetz Chaim, it says the uh, Magen Abraham, it is um, reconcilable, right? So. Mishnah um, says, "Well, this is going to be the next next part of the Shukharuch. Really, uh, we're going to let's let's wait on it. We'll just leave it. Bezat Hashem. We'll continue this Emirz um, Hashem in the days to come. Chazak Beruch."